everyone. Hello, Melody. Hi. Hey. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to 40 Minutes With. Um, this is day three of Artex Lagos 2020, and I'm excited to have you all join us this afternoon, this evening, or this day, wherever you may be, um, on this, you know, for this exciting session, which is called 40 Minutes With. 40 Minutes With is our take on the insightful conversations that we would typically have at our Artex Lagos booths. Um, and this year, we're really excited to have a digital version of it. Um, to moderate this session is a dear friend of ours, a guest moderator, Papa Omotayo, who is an award-winning architect, designer, writer, and filmmaker. Papa's work strongly focuses on exploring the nature of culture and the context within contemporary Nigerian and the extended African condition locally and globally. He's a strong believer in creating work through cross-disciplinary collaboration and participation, and he strives to find new possibilities for creating nuanced visual narratives in Nigeria's, Nigeria and Africa's urban centers and beyond. He's the founder of a white space creative agency and creative director of MOE Plus Art Architecture. He currently lives and works in Lagos, Nigeria, and I must mention that he's a dear friend and a member of the board of ArtX Collective. Welcome, Papa, and thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. It's great to be here. Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we, we can. can. Okay. <laughs> hey, guys. It's so great to be here, and uh, these conversations are really important, and we have two really great uh, curators, gallerists here with us um, that are really working with artists that are very important, both within the continent and in diaspora. Um, we have Gazelle Geriadu from Louis Simone Gallery in um, Cote d'Ivoire, um, uh, Abidjan. And then we have Ed Cross from the Ed Cross Fine Art in London. Uh, thank you both for being here. Um, I think as well, I'd love for you to maybe tell uh, our audience who have not been able to, who won't be able to have the usual walk into your gallery space during our text and sort of get to experience um, what the gallery is about. Because I think one of the most important things and exciting things about the format that our text is that it allowed people to, to experience um, the, the galleries from Africa and the diaspora. So I'd love for you to maybe tell us about the gallery and then Ed, maybe you could do the same afterwards. Hello everyone and thank you for having, uh, for having me today. Um, I wish to, uh, to introduce the gallery because Louis Simon Girondou Gallery started in uh, 2015, but in fact, the whole story started in 1985 when uh, my parents came back from, uh, from Canada and my mom as an art uh, historian decided to start you know, making exhibitions at home in the garden around the, the swimming pool. That's how it started. So it started like a few long, long time ago and we were we were kids, my, my siblings and, uh, and myself. And every time she was preparing an, an exhibition, we all participated. Like even my father, um, we had to participate to help her, you know, put these things together to help her show people around. So we were, we've always been in art. It, uh, that's the way it, it started for me. And then uh, in six years later in 1991, then she got uh, what I would say a more conservative place. She got a place called um, Galerie Art Pluriel, where she, uh, she promoted art for 30 years. After that, we decided in 2014, we decided to build this Louis Simon Girondou Gallery, which is now, uh, which is now uh, over what used to be the swimming pool and part uh of the garden. Yes, and the name Louis Simon Girondou is because the villa is already, Louis is my father's name, Simon is my mother's name, and as the gallery is uh, juxting, 
you know, the, the villa, which is called Louis Simon uh, Girondou Villa, we decided to call the gallery Louis Simon Girondou Gallery. That's the way it, it all started. So we're back home now. <laughs> so it's, 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 I guess it's part of what makes you, which is fantastic to hear. Yeah. Um, Ed, could you tell us a little bit more about, um, just a little bit of background on Ed Cross Fine Art? Yes. <clears throat> I can't uh, compete with 1985, but I, I can almost uh, match that with 1988 <clears throat> when I went to live in Kenya. Um, and I spent 20 years, uh, pretty much 20 years in East Africa. Um, at one point, uh, initially I was in, in publishing, but my main interest to go there was to practice as an artist. Um, and I didn't do that until around 2000. Uh, and then started to to actually go full time as a sculptor. And around 2005, um, I started looking at collecting contemporary African art <clears throat> as a kind of business project, but also completely, you know, close to my heart. Um, and that's really when I when this kind of what my enterprise really started. Then I then moved back to London in 2000. And um, nine and started my Ed Cross Fine Art here in London then. Initially I had a, a, a small space uh, and that was at the time of the of the, um, the, the recession so things were pretty difficult. Um, that space kind of became unavailable and I then sort of ran with this model which is kind of not having a space which is a nomadic gallery model and fully embrace that. Uh, and I've been like that ever since. So I have my offices at Somerset House in the center of London, this wonderful um, art center and historic uh, building. Um, but I don't have a full-time space. So I do art fairs, I do pop-ups and so on. And it has actually been a very um, fortuitous model really for this current situation. Um, so I'm, I'm blessed with that. Um, as far as the gallery is concerned, and it is kind of, even though we don't have a gallery space, it operates exactly like another gallery in many ways. Um, we mostly work, but not entirely, with uh, African artists or artists from the diaspora because of my, my history in, in East Africa, really. Um, and um, we are very collaborative in the way we work. Um, we are, we like to uh, wherever possible, as it were, it's a kind of, it's a mixture of French business friendship, which um, is traditionally <laughs> reckoned not to be a good thing, but that's how we, that's how we operate very successfully. Um, and we are, uh, we have around eight uh, artists that we work with regularly, um, several mm. from Nigeria and uh, many from, from the diaspora. Great. Um, Gazelle, I, I, I mean, I know you're, you're an art historian um, and it'd be really good to get an idea of what the galleries, obviously this gallery has had this a long history with your mother, your father and yourself. I think it'd be great to, to hear a little bit more about what the gallery's focus is and then maybe you could speak to us a little bit about the current artists that you're working with and you're showcasing at Artex 5 this year. Okay, sorry for, you know, always bending because I have my puppy with me who is trying to <laughs> who is playing, so I don't want him to make noise. Um, the, the, to, to start, I will talk about Art Pluriel because my mother at that time, she was exhibiting arts from everywhere. Every continent, every artist could, you know, come and she would do the, the promotion. So you have had artists from the States, from, uh, from Africa, from Europe, from Guatemala. They all, you know, it was just the artistic uh, art that was interesting uh, for my mother, my mother at that time. And then we decided, now we've been doing more of African contemporary art, but also we have, to, we are presenting, we have presented, sorry, artists who are not sometimes African, but they treat African subject. They talk about African subjects. Um, 
the three artists we have decided to um, to present to you uh, this year is uh, Abladé Glover, who everyone knows is from uh, is from Ghana. We have three generations this year. We have Abladé Glover, we have Nou Barreto, who is from um, Guinea-Bissau. And the youngest one is uh, Seseso, who is Ivorian. So it's three, three different type of, uh, of, uh, of art, but mm -hmm. all uh, talking about Africa. So uh, if I want to go a little bit further, talking about um, Professor Abladé Glover. Yeah, I think that would be interesting, especially since, you know, speaking with his work from a, uh, also from an art historian point of view, I think, because he is one of the considered the masters. Right? Yes, he's a master. And he, uh, and the story began with him in uh, 1991, in fact. That's the first time that he exhibited in, uh, in Côte d'Ivoire and it was at uh, our previous gallery. And the most interesting thing about Professor Glover is that he, the, the main uh, uh, people of, his main domain will be the woman, the African woman, and more specifically the Ghanaian woman. And you can see them with in all kinds of, uh, of situation, the empowerment of women. He, he, the subject is the woman as a sister, as a mother, as a friend, the, the woman on, um, how would I say it in English? All the, the faces, all the facets of, uh, of the woman. This is for Abla de Glover, he also likes he also likes uh, crowds. You will see market crowds also in his, uh, in his painting. You would also see um, uh, some, he used to have also beaches, but it's always crowd. It's either yeah. women or, or uh, 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 crowds, market crowds, very animated uh, places. And he has those beautiful colors, which is, uh, uh, he paints with a, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the name in English exactly, but it's, uh, he paints at the, with, the, with a knife. That's the way he, uh, he does the paintings. The very spatula. Yeah. Pardon? Spatulata, spatula. Spatula, d'accord. Very thick, very thick uh, uh, paintings, which always give, um, it gives you um, another way to appreciate the art. It's a pity that we, you don't really appreciate it on, online, but it's the kind of paintings that you would want to be in front of, to really mm -hmm. see the different, you know, the thick parts, the different colors, the mixtures uh, mm -hmm. of, the, of the art. But you can still go with the, with the online painting because Abla de Glover is a, a well-known artist from, uh, from Ghana. And the new, and, and then new, about new? New Barreto, new Barreto uh, he's from uh, Guinea, Guinea Bissau. And new Barreto, I want to talk especially about his, uh, his flags. There's a flag he did, which is called uh, Bones. And you will see, um, you will see that he um, he talks about the unite the disunited uh, uh, states of Africa. If we can go on, uh, to, if we could go to Nubareto, maybe we'll see the this flag that I'm talking about, which represents. The 40, uh, he does the parallel with the United States, but for, unfortunately for Africa, we are not that united. So he talks about the disunited states of, uh, of, uh, of Africa. And uh, he talks a lot about the, the, the suffering, the, the, exactly. This is, voila, you can see the, the flag. The poem's flag. Um, and also some, voila, you get it here, voila, which is uh, very interesting. These are, 
it's not it's not birds he works on um, it's a work he, he does on wood and these are amulets that he has put representing the different countries of uh, of the continent and you will always find a red color in his work which mm -hmm. represents the, the suffering the, the violence the yeah, unfortunate. I mean, unfortunately, what most of African countries are, mm. are are living. So this is this also should be. It should be very nice to see it en uh, présentiel. Uh, but then it represents every part. Every part is done very uh, meticulously. It, it, there's there's painting, there's collage, and there's also. Uh, 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 things that you put on the on the flag. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no? absolutely. I mean, it'd, it'd be interesting to talk a bit. <laughs> it'd be interesting to talk about maybe the scale, the scale he works out, and maybe the process of his techniques. You can see the red, like it's really evident Always. in Always. that Always. in his work. The red and is the... there seems a, a sort of an architecture, an urbanism to to some of the forms as well. Yes. So the color red is the color of which attracts us. Is the color of anger, in fact. Mm -hmm. So you will find it in most of his uh, most of his uh, of his uh, paintings. Mm -hmm. And there's also a very creative, um, very creative way of doing it. There's marouflage. The, do you say marouflage in uh, in English, Papa? Marouflage. No. Marouflage. <laughs> bon. Uh, okay. But I, I think we can. I think it's a it's a good enough word to, to describe. Deco, Deco, we could look into the the dictionary and uh, and find the the meaning. So the technique is he deals with several techniques, which will be marouflage. He will also do plywood, which will be the structure of mm. uh, of his work. And okay, I, now I found the. the, the the, the the pieces that you can see on the on the flag are clubs. That is the, the structure of this uh, of this uh, of this flag. Yes. So there's a lot of mixture, assembling, and several uh, several uh, aspects which he he is using. You want to go and, on? And, uh, and moving on from um, news. We're going to Sesiso. Maybe we could talk a bit about Sesiso. Okay. Sesiso yes. is, the, is the younger generation. He, uh, he's an, uh, uh, an Ivorian, young Ivorian, who, always, who also teaches art in uh, uh, art schools here. And the, um, the originality of Sesiso is that he, he always wrote. Since he was a kid, he's been writing stories. So he's been writing stories and drawing at the same time. And the particularly, uh, uh, something that makes Sess very um, uh, original is that he had the blessing of his father when he was uh, a kid mm -hmm. to do the paint, to, to paint and to, and to write. So it's it's interesting because most of the time, you know, parents would you know be worried that you go into art, are you going to, you know, to be able to have a life and everything. But he did. He uh, he was uh, encouraged by his father, and you will always see there's always um, a lit a writing in uh, mm. in uh, in his uh, in his pictures. I mean, in his uh, drawing. I, I, I was going to ask whether that has affected his, because he's sort of, whether that freedom or rather that support, which is quite, I don't want to say unheard of, but which is quite rare on the continent from a parent point of view, how, how that translates with his work or rather how his work has developed over the years. Do you, do you get evidence of that beyond just this, um, beyond the letters that are, you get you, it's very interesting because he also when I talk about uh, writing he also takes um, history books that he used to that you know you normally have when you are in the secondary school 
Mm. He kept them, he got them. So there's always, you see, for example, here on this painting, you will see history. This is the first year of secondary school. So mm. he takes the, he takes the, the, the book, there's the story of uh, African, uh, African uh, countries, especially uh, the histories on Africa. And then from that, he will, paint, um, he will paint people or he will do also collage. You can see in that painting that there's also a, a collage. So there's painting and collage also and writing. If he doesn't write it himself, he will always find the legend in the history book and then put it on his uh, put it on his uh, his paintings. So this is and this part uh, this series is called kind of story. So right. he tells his way. Um, he has his interpretation of African uh, African uh, stories history African history story. Fantastic. Yeah. And and I think I, I think I'm gonna have a ask Ed to talk a little bit about Ed Cross. But I think what I'd like to, after that, maybe we can come back and see how the three, because I, I see some interesting lines between all three artists. So I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that later. Okay. Ed, could you talk a little bit more about the artists that, uh, in, that, are, that Ed Cross Fine Arts is sharing with, with us this year? Yes. Um, I, often art fairs ask you to curate your booth, as it were, on a, on a theme. And I'm quite glad that Artex um, doesn't do that because it can be quite an artificial kind of process. But when I was thinking about the artists that I've actually brought along, uh, some themes sort of hit me between the eyes, really. Um, and one of them is agency, um, and the other is destiny, two very big themes, really. Um, and I would, I should start really with Tiffany. Um, and there is a painting, if we can find it, called Love Circus, um, which I'm particularly pleased to have um, in, in, the, in the show. Um, and the reason for this is because, there we are. Um, this painting emerged after Tiffany's first solo show, which was actually in Lagos, which was her first visit to Africa. She's of Congolese, Belgian, French uh, descent. She hadn't been to Africa and she took a very bold decision really to accept an offer uh, of a residency in Lagos at a place called 1616 and did a very successful show there. Um, in 2018 and I think uh, Lagos changed the the direction of her life really uh, she found it enormously stimulating um, the work that she produced there was beautiful but essentially kind of design and color and form it wasn't really about deeper issues um, but when she got back to the UK, she had some, some issues uh, that she had to confront and she chose to use her art to kind of dive into her own psyche and her own uh, past, which had quite a lot of trauma in it, family trauma, um, in order to, in a way, to heal herself. But, and so this particular painting was the turning point for her. It was the first painting that she did uh, which, where she dived into herself, as it were. Um, and interestingly, I'd uh, come across her just around the time or just before the time that she had her show in Lagos. And I was interested in her story, but I wasn't convinced that the art that she was producing at that point was kind of right for what I, what I do. And I saw her at 154, another art fair. She came along to meet me. And she had this work on her phone. Uh, and I said to her, I just, I kind of need to know whether there's what is behind your work. If there is, if you're, if there is kind of uh, content behind the work. And she said, well, up until recently, no, but 
everything has changed. And she showed me this painting. And from that moment, uh, we started working together. I, I, I didn't even know all that painting. Um, and what's really great actually is to have this work because it, it's also in quite strong contrast to the other works. If you can flick, <laughs> flick the screen and we'll have a look at some of the other works, um, which are, very, for example, this work here, um, Midnight Walk, um, which uh, is done in 2020. And what's happened is that Tiffany's been on an amazing kind of journey of uh, uh, that continuation of, of delving into her, her, her family story and her past. And has kind of come out the other end, if you like, um, always positively, um, and is now looking at her own kind of spiritual destiny. Um, and in, not just her own, indeed, the whole nature of freedom and travel, mental as well as physical. Um, so we have these two very contrasting um, sets of work, or at least one work and then, then another set of works. Mm. What is not very clear from here, from again, it's always better if you see things in real life, as we know, but um, these works, particularly the, the, the more recent works, uh, which are sort of down further down the screen, um, have all sorts of materials in them. I mean, one of them actually has a key. Some of them are sewn. Um, they have glitter. They have stockings. They have all sorts of um, wonderful materials. Uh, and that becomes very clear when you see them. Um, for example, these, these small star uh, things are stitched uh, it, there, for example. Um, so yeah, so, uh, and I kind of, I'm drawn, not all my artists uh, come to art through unconventional routes, but quite often, <laughs> quite a lot of them do. Uh, funnily enough, the next artist I want to talk about, Wally Lagunju, is much more, has a much more conventional career um, and many of you in Lagos and elsewhere will know um, of Wally. Um, those in Lagos may know that he, um, he went to Ife University. Uh, he left in um, 1986, he graduated. And for the next 10 years, he actually graduated in, in design uh, rather than fine art, but immediately became an artist and a successful one. Um, and spent 10 years working as an artist, supporting himself, and then went off to Germany and then eventually to America and has kind of rebuilt his career or reimagined his career uh, since then. And has had, I have to say, has had an incredibly successful uh, year, uh, particularly this year, um, and has just been growing in stature. Um, these works that we see here are all from the Galetti series, which is, he started uh, about eight years ago, um, reimagining, recontextualizing um, Galetti masks and his, fa his fascination with, he's fascinated by Yoruba uh, cosmology um, and trying to bring it into the present day. And I'm glad we've we've landed on this particular painting, um, which is called Contemplating Ori. Now I'm not going to give a lecture on Ori because um, <laughs> that would be very inappropriate. But <laughs> as I understand it, um, Ori represents the head and also and, and in turn represents destiny, spiritual destiny. And so we have this young man who does not have a Galetti mask on his head, but has a mask like head. So it's kind of evolved from that earlier, from that series, it's part of it. Um, contemplating this figure um, and contemplating spiritual destiny, either his own or somebody else's or possibly the destiny of a country or a people. I think it's a kind of, um, homage to the young collectors um, 
in quotes that are underpin what is a kind of African art revolution that's going on at the moment. Um, and I think it's 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 great that he's actually brought in um, the patron in a way. I mean, this this young man may not be a patron; he may just be an admirer of the work. Mm. But whatever his role is, he he is uh, an active participant. And I think um, there's a lovely kind of squaring of the circle there. Um, this painting. Um, is, uh, I forget the title exactly, but the Indigo Blue, Women in Indigo Blue, is really a, a homage again to the indigo uh, plant, which is, has such deep uh, cultural uh, importance, um, in, particularly in, in, in Yoruba um, culture. And um, I think it's very interesting to see these paintings. If you look at, back actually a bit, um, we might see some of the earlier works here. So, for example, the, this this work, the, the work with the yellow uh, Parisienne, yeah, Parisienne. Uh, also one that I can't see properly on, on the right of the screen, uh, Renaissance. Uh, these are earlier works um, where obviously the faces are not visible. Um, and what you can see is him playing around with notions of gender and kind of gently challenging uh, the fact that the lady masks are as i understand it uh, supposed to be worn only by men or yes. certain, uh, men depicting representing women and here we have uh, an amazing young woman wearing the mask herself so i mentioned agency before and destiny uh, again we've you know we've we're on track there with, with this work. Yeah, um, and, and, I, and I think it would be good to touch a little bit later about this idea of representation. And, you know, you can see that in Mollet's work. I think there is, within the entire uh, language or discussion currently, whether that's on the continent or the wider diaspora about this idea of yeah. portraiture, vis visual representation, gender fluidity, um, and, I, and, it's, and it's interesting that you raise that. And, and I think it's something that I'd like to put to both you and Gazelle later. Perhaps we could just talk a little bit about Abe, because obviously there's a, in, in similar to Wally, there's a, he, he was an architect, yes. uh, artist, so many things. Yes. Um, he, uh, Abe was an architect for, for many years um, and um, if we look at um, Balancing Act, um, which should be down on the left, top left, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that painting. Um, what some people may not know that uh, Abbe went to Hull University and studied architecture. He arrived when he was 17. He knew London quite well. Uh, and, and really loved London, uh, but was a little bit disconcerted by Hull, which uh, is a, a very interesting place, but has is quite considerable kind of social deprivation and so on, and economic deprivation uh, at the time. And he, um, his lecturer had the good idea of sending all the undergraduates out shortly after they arrived to go and discover something that interested them in Hull. And Abbe Julie went out and discovered the Hull Fair, which was the uh, biggest fair of its kind in Europe, which was the traditional kind of circus type fair where they had sword swallowers and fire eaters and gymnasts and, and the tallest men and all that sort of thing. And if you look at Abbe's work, um, and I must say, I, I'm got, before I forget, I'm going to put a plug in here for my uh, book, which um, this is the first gallery uh, that we've, uh, sorry, the first book that this gallery has published, which we're so excited about, which is coming out pretty much now. Um, but um, if you look at um, Abbe's work, you'll find these images of magicians and People like this wonderful young woman uh, performing, in quotes, magic 
uh, tricks and and so on, things that the normal normal mortals could never even contemplate, uh, but are possible. So it's kind of everyday magic. Um, and I think that more than anything else, this is about agency going back to this theme again, um, which is that woman who's doing that thing, if you go up, well, if possibly go up again, um, is not doing it because there's a man there with a whip, um, you know, forcing her to do it. Uh, she is doing that because she loves doing it. And um, she's also, um, the whole question of balance is critical and she understands that and she embodies that. Um, I, I wanted to say as well that this particular painting is in a virtual show at the moment um, uh, at uh, something called VOMA, which is a new, very exciting, and I hope everyone will go and have a look at this thing. It's a new virtual museum. Um, and this painting is alongside Manet's Olympia, um, which is a painting that Abbe admires, but uh, the, the black servant who is serving this, you know, the, the, the sort of the, the white naked woman uh, has little or no agency. And I think the point of putting them together is to kind of compare and contrast. Um, the other painting I wanted to just briefly mention is Uprising, um, which, I mean, I don't really need to say very much about this. Yeah, um, it's very powerful. Uh, except that this was painted after uh, our, our trip to Lagos. I don't think it had any necessarily any connection with, with the trip to Lagos, but it was well before um, the NSARS protests, of course, and indeed the George Floyd um, tragedy in America. Of course, there's always, you know, there are always uprisings going on, but it, it's somehow prophetic, I think, this painting. And it is a homage to activists who, many of them are women who put their lives on the line to speak truth to power. Um, so I'm really proud to, to show this painting uh, at Artex at the moment. It's, it's really beautiful, and it's so fantastic to hear about these amazing artists from both of you. I think what I find really interesting about the, the artists and the, the, the galleries is um, like this sort of cross-generational uh, and cross-perspectives. And I think that's always really important. You know, we talk about work coming from the continent as sometimes being presented as one tonal. And I think just in seeing the two works in galleries, like, you know, where we have this uh, realism, whether it's reflected in Baba or, or Cess, and then the mysticism that sort of we talked about with Tiffany and to a certain extent with Abbe, is a, I, I would like to know how, how, like, why you, why these themes are important to the gallery and why you think these artists speak to, to this current condition where we are on the continent. Who goes first? Gazelle? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were talking to... to uh, you know, the, the, what is interesting is that the message that is uh, behind, the, behind the, the painting is like, it's like if, if you were opening a book, it's like a book, you know, you would say, oh, this writer is fantastic, or I haven't met this writer yet, so I'm going to, you know, kind of start reading and start learning about the story. Because there's always, there's always um, uh, a story that they want to communicate to, to us. There's a, there's a history, there's a message. And I think that from uh, what we are seeing, um, we have very strong, from the three artists we have, we have very strong messages that, that come out of it. With, um, with for example, Professor uh, Abla de Glover, it's always the, the woman empowerment, which is, uh, for example, this year. And I can make also a connection with, uh, with Ed talking about this painting, about the, the woman empowerment. So you have, you have the story, as you were saying, Ed, about this uh, this painting that was done after the George Floyd um, 
uh, uh, happening in, in the state. And you have on the other side, you have this man, Professor Gruber, who is painting the woman completely differently, mm -hmm. but it's still empowering a woman. You see, there's a, the activism is, is there, but it's shown differently. In uh, the African uh, context, you see her strong, you see uh, the, the, all the responsibilities a woman can have. You see her also standing very strong and elegant at the same time. And uh, this is, this is the, the connection I could do with the, the painting that you just uh, showed us. While on the other part with Nu, he shows you another, another, um, another history. He's, uh, he, uh, he, his work resonates very strongly with the Anzar um, uh, movement that happened in, uh, in Nigeria. You can see the, um, the suffering, but also people saying enough is enough. Mm -hmm. And so it, it shows in his work. And uh, I'm, um, I'm, very, uh, I'm very glad that we, uh, we had the opportunity to show his work because we are all sending the same message and uh, the future is for the young people. They need to express themselves. We need to do better in our, in our countries. And at the same time, you also have Sesiso, mm -hmm. Sesiso who shows you that um, the society, uh, the African society have a problem with their, especially the one, Les Maîtres de la Nuit, uh, de la nuit Étoilée, it shows it's an imaginary society. I mean, on the far, on the far, uh, that would be for me the far right, mm. where he tells, he talks about our societies today. We have been going uh, in, a, we haven't been going in a direction where we don't recognize ourselves anymore, and we need to come back to uh, to our um, our tradition. So you ha you even have one one uh, painting that says purification. We're getting mm -hmm. lost. People are getting lost with uh, with uh, politics, with uh, power. But at the same time, we have our beliefs. We are also animist or Catholic or Muslim. And then we do all those things. And then we want to come back and get this purification. And then we will pray and ask for God to help us. Although when we go out, we kill people, we fight people, and that's the that's what he wanted to uh, to show in his painting, which is very important to and nowadays. It has it makes sense nowadays. Uh, yeah, and it's very 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 powerful and and, and in, engaging. And, and I think you know I I so wish I could see these in person because I feel like that personal experience really brings you into the work. And I think. When Ed was talking about Wale and Tiffany's work as well, um, and this sort of uh, almost mysticism, this sort of fantasy, like that is born out of heritage and an understanding of, uh, or rather, a new perce perception, perspective of, of of what our culture and our heritage could be. Um, so, Ed, maybe just speak a little bit of. of why you feel that's important in the work uh, and why you wanted to show that this year. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a thread that runs through everything, almost everything that we do in the gallery in a way, or many of the artists that we work with. There's a kind of, um, I think there's a kind of talismanic um, aspect. Uh, I like to, to think that people can buy paintings that can be a constant source of inspiration to them. Mm. Um, I have many conversations with Abe uh, about, and one, and one of them, Abe said to me, you know, we're in the business of selling, selling magic. Um, and it's not, you know, we smile in a way, but it's, it's when you think about it, it's, it's kind of true. Um, and so people can take a painting, live with that painting, generations, mm. Can, can share that painting, can mean different things, of course, to everyone. But uh, the end result should be um, nourishing, uh, in my opinion. I mean, of course, that is 
uh, there are many different, you know, different ways of looking at, at art. And but what I tend to gravitate towards and what the gallery is kind of more and more kind of standing up for now is this notion of art um, as, as, as a tool in a sense, not a simple tool, but a, a very profound tool to, uh, to, to, to assist people in, in, in agency and in achieving their destiny in, in a way. And we're not talking about some kind of, you know, new age type, type thing. God forbid, uh, frankly. But we are we're talking about something very down to earth. Well, and by the way, when um, Gazelle was talking about um, the uprising painting, just just to correct correct that uh, thing, that that painting was painted well before um, the George Floyd tragedy oh. and so on. So it wasn't kind of in response to that. And what you're saying, um, I know that um, Abe, in particular, is would thoroughly agree with that uh, paintings are, don't have to be about trauma. Um, they, they, you know, celebration of love is mm. absolutely is revolutionary, actually, and that's what mm. Professor Glover does. And I always, I've always sort of sensed that. Um, mm. And that's why, in a way, when you look, when you're selling African art in Europe, in quotes, African art, um, the, the European, uh, you're, you're up against, in a way, a very different way of looking at art. Um, but I think things are actually uh, uh, changing quite particularly, I have to say, as we go through this very difficult time at the moment. Um, that people... And actually, that leads, that actually, sorry to interrupt that, because that actually leads me to one of the questions. Yes. Uh, and you touched on it a little bit about how can, and I think as well, maybe you could touch on this. Um, like, how can galleries ensure that their art selection for fairs, especially, right? Because obviously, we know fairs are, are there not just to showcase, but to sell work. That the fair, the, the selection of work gives a greater reflection on the diversity of offering from artists working on the continent. Like, yes. How do you think about that, Gazelle? How do I... Um, uh, yeah, how do we, how, as a gallery, how do you ensure that what you're presenting um, kind of offers or in the shows this, that there is a diverse offering, that it isn't just a particular bracket? You know, Ed talked about what Abby said, that look, artists can paint about love, they can paint about struggle, they can paint about, you know, hi history. Um, it's, but how do we ensure that? How do you ensure that as a gallery? Uh, the way we, we do, you know, you also have to, to take the, the when you, you go to a fair, there's always a context around. It depends on the, on the period. It depends on the, there's a, you just don't go to a fair. You go, it's an, it's an ensemble, it's a whole. And then from there you can decide, okay, I would like to show this kind of painting to, in, to that part of the, of the world. Mm -hmm. For example, with the new artists that we, we have, which is mainly, it's difficult for them nowadays, you know, to show their painting because of the pandemic and all the, all the, 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 the consequences that we, uh, we cannot travel anymore and show they work. But still, you have to present, you have to introduce people to new, uh, to new uh, artists. Like I was saying, it's like if you talk, we, you, you have eBooks, but you don't have <clears throat> painting yet. But as you want to show, uh, depending on the, the public you will have, depending on the subject, you would decide this artist should be out to this fair, for example, because there's a, there's a message that goes with the, the current fair. Let's talk about Noon, for example, when I talk about his, uh, his uh, flag, Bones. He, um, he, uh, there, was a, there was a connection with what happened in, uh, in Nigeria, unfortunately. And uh, so the choice we had made about this art that we wanted to show 
was that they, it was in connection with what was happening at that time in, uh, I mean, re very recently, the yeah. in uh, in Lagos. So mm -hmm. you you have to know, you have to be in the context. You don't just choose an artist like that and say, okay, I'm going for to show, because right. of course we want to sell, but we also, what is important is also to show the, the <clears throat> art of the different artists we have for people to get, um, to get touched by it. They need to discover different, we have so many artists. So they need, we need to program as galleries, it's for us to organize the promotion of the artists and not to, to know exactly, or most of the time, the yeah. best way where to present them and how to present them also. And, and speaking about artists, especially young, younger artists, yeah. I mean, right now we're on a digital platform yeah. um, that sort of speaks to this a newer generation, and hopefully, um, you know, a lot of those young artists are out there because maybe they won't be able to visit Artex. They can That's see it and, and get to know about you and your galleries and what you stand for, which for me is really, really exciting. But both of you have very established artists, and I think one of the questions that was just sent in was. How do you support younger, younger artists? And I would like to add to that. Um, and thinking about younger artists and thinking about digital innovation um, with everything that's happened this year with the platform that we're on, um, how, how you are thinking about incorporating that into your galleries going forward. So maybe Ed, you could speak about um, supporting younger artists and, and how you may think about this digital innovation a little bit. And then maybe Gazelle, you could speak a little bit about mm -hmm. that too. And then we can close off with a final statement. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, got a, uh, I've got a good, a very good news story in the sense that we took on a young artist called Anya Pencil, who's Welsh Ghanaian artist, uh, while mm -hmm. she was still a student um, this year. Um, and by the end of the year, um, she is, her work is in the collection of two major museums in the UK. I mean, these are things that not, don't happen very often, if at all. Um, but um, I'm always on the lookout, um, if you like, for, for young, for new artists, partly because you know, I just think it's it's just exciting to to try and nurture, you know, and find new talent, and also a kind of one's conscience or whatever that it feels good to do that. Um, and I have to say, in the case of Anya, um, the we had a show uh, at One Five Four, another art fair in London, uh, which was a physical show, so people could actually come and see the work. Um, but otherwise we, we presented it digitally. Um, but I, I don't see, I mean, I think we're now, we're now, hopefully we're now over the worst of this pandemic, I think. Um, and that we can see kind of light at the end of the tunnel. And I think what we'll do is start bringing, we'll bring digital much more into what we're doing as a matter of course, but we will go back quite soon I hope in the next, you know, within the course of the of the of this coming year, to physical presentations. I think exactly. for young artists, without them, it is very very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, in the, what I'm saying in the case of Anya, we did have a physical presentation which was very successful. Although it was it was successful, her success actually came before that art fair. Um, so, what I'm it's a kind of message of hope there that there are it is possible. Um, yeah. And, and Gazelle, maybe you can talk about how we could, um, like how you may think about this digital and incorporating the, a little bit in the innovation and then maybe speak about one artist that maybe you're excited about going towards uh, 2021. Because um, I, I, I think it's as difficult as this year has been, I think it's also important for all of us to look at what we can bring and learn from it to take 
uh, take on to the future. So I'd love you to answer that, and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap up. Uh, yeah, I um, I uh, I'm going to talk also again about Seth because he's the youngest uh, in in uh, the group of th this group of three, but he also had an exhibition before the pandemic, which was last year. And uh, so people had the opportunity, <clears throat> sorry, to discover, to discover his work. Thank, um, thank God, because as Ed was saying, it's difficult to, for young artists to show their work on digital platforms, but at the same time, we have to, to get used to it. We have, there's, it, 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 it means that the galleries have to work more and work differently in order for people to now get used to also have platforms uh, introducing the young artists and um, and showing them because even if the we of course we need to all get together it's different i mean art is something that you need to feel to smell to almost touch although you you don't touch the paintings but you need to you need this physical presence but at the same time, I think it's on uh, it's our uh, it's our responsibility mm -hmm. to, to be able to adapt to this new uh, this new way of uh, showing art and uh, taking carrying those young artists to make them believe in uh, the promotion that we are doing of them. So it's for the gallery. It's there's more work from the from the gallery now. It's not only opening and showing uh, mm -hmm. and showing an exhibition. It's for us to work on our on the promotion of our young artists. For us to talk about it. For us to show show it around, and then people will get interested more and more. But we nice, we nice definitely day. know we definitely need the the presential. I mean the physical, yes. and we need to go back to that too. I miss it. As a, as a collector, I miss it. But yes. at the same time, uh, I could be interested by one of your works, Ed, because the way you talked about it, it feels like I would like to see, I would like to see it. So, you know, when you're passionate yeah. about, about art, it, 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 it does talk to you. There's a way it communicates something to you. So, and I think that's so great can about I just say, can I just say, can I say something that, I also think uh, on reflection as well about younger artists, I think that if the work is really strong, you can show it digitally. There's no question about it because people, I mean, not everyone is going to get it, you know, by looking at it digitally, no, but no. people that really are really interested will yeah. be looking very carefully and yeah. can spot it in a way a mile off, which is really what happened with Anya. Um, you know, most people saw her work on Instagram. Um, and mm. And, yeah. and that's, you know, that if the work is, if, if an artist is really on, on form, they shouldn't worry. They will, they will, they will make it. That, that's, that's my, uh, <laughs> my opinion. I, I think just hearing you talk about the artist's work for me is like, I've learned so much. And I was saying to Melody earlier, who introduced us, how, yeah, I, I mean, I've done so much research, I, I, you know, I, I, I know about these artists and hearing you speak about it is just giving me a totally different idea. And I think what is really exciting about Artex this year is that I think the collectors can actually come, they can actually reach out and, and speak to yes. you specifically about the work. So that's exciting. Yes. Yeah. How does that happen? It, it's just through the website, I'm, I imagine. Yes. Um, I believe so. And, and can I just put a plug in for Artex to say thank you very much for uh, everything that you're doing, because it's a really first class um, outfit yes. and a real, I mean, it's beyond world class. It's really great. Um, and, and so congratulations to, to all of you. A very innovative, very professional, very friendly. Great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, and please collectors um i'm not even sure exactly how the system works but there's a there's a some sort of portal on the website we we can be um you know accessed um so you can have conversations with us if you wish um you must not ask for a discount um, <laughs> I, I'm really 
<laughs> I would like also to say uh, to say a word towards Artex Legos and to this. Uh, uh, I will call them now Wonder Woman because <laughs> they are. They, I, I mean, I've been amazed by the quality of this uh, digital uh, uh, fair, yes, and yes. Uh, I've been telling them every day. I'm really impressed by the the, the level and the the quality of this uh, of this digital edition, which was you know decided kind of uh, you know last mm -hmm. uh, minute. So you see, I mean. Ladies, bravo, and uh, all the best. Really, bravo to uh, to you. the whole team. And I yeah. hope to to meet. I, I hope to meet you, uh, Papa and Ed, physically. Now yes. that uh, now that we know each other, it will be a great pleasure to meet you uh, physically. Thank the yeah. thank the team. Thank you both so much for this wonderful forty minutes with. Um, I hope to get Abidjan very soon, Gazelle. Yeah. And, and Ed, I hope to get to London really soon because Great. Um, Looking forward. And the artists that we've talked about are truly, truly uh, uh, wonderful. And um, I hope everybody that is listening and watching in uh, uh, goes through on the Art Egg website and, and finds out a little bit more about the gallery, galleries, but Ed's and uh, Gazelle's. And more importantly, just gets to see all the amazing work from the yeah. artists that they've spoken about today. So thank you again. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you, Artex. And that's that's a wrap. Have a wonderful evening, guys. Bye.